close public comment. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, that brings us now to council deliberation, if desired. And I have two requests here. First, we have council member Shaylinda Bernard. Um, I would just like to first point out, Roy, we'll never get rid of you. It's okay. Um, and second, uh, so I sit on the subcommittee um, for parks. And so I want to make sure everyone understands it's not necessarily about the money. It's not necessarily about the crime. It's the fact that um, our, um, our parks team, and um, Jeremy and Ms. Donna have talked about this, they are putting together a master plan where we're going to be back in review in May of starting to figure out what all our parks need, what we need to do to get them um, up to standard, what amenities um, the parks need, and what the community as a whole throughout the city would like to see. So what I, and I will say this because I was in the meeting today, so what I pointed out was, I wanna make sure that everybody's starting off at the same, at the same playing field. I wanna make sure that every park is getting what they need before we put this basketball court in. And I don't know if there's, there's not for me, there's no difference between waiting till December once the plan is, is thought out, because we can include this in the plan. Um, between waiting in December and then dealing with this now, because even if we go out, we get a, um, a consultant and all of that, there may still not even happen before the summer. So I want to, if we have a plan and we're gonna move forward with a plan to have all of these things addressed throughout the city, that's why I said that I would personally um, think that we should hold off on this and add it to that plan. Because then we can make sure that the money and everything that's coming out with, is everything that's designated specifically for that and is, ma and, is, um, and is matching the master plan that we have. I'm not one to, um, it's my district, I've walked that area, I have uh, clients in that area. I'm not one that's gonna sit up here and talk about public safety because I don't think that area is dangerous. Nothing in that area bothers me, so I don't have an issue with that. I just wanna make sure that across the board, everything with every park and we're addressing every need with all the parks. I wanna make sure we're not putting a basketball court here and I've got a park over here that probably needs um, new faucets that are more important right now for the kids during the summer to be able to drink water or something like that. That's all I was asking for. Next we have Mayor Pro Tem Delgado. I will make this quick. So Jeremy, you said that the, the Parks um, Commission met today. Um, the Parks and Community Subcommittee. Subcommittee met today. So your recommendation changed or the summary has changed and um, I would agree with uh, Council Member Bernard that we should wait until the PCST master plan is developed and move forward then. So I, I'm, I would, um, can I motion now so we do not approve the recommended action as pre presented and provide the direction and the direction to staff would be wait until the PC, PCST is, uh, master plan is looked at in December of 2023. So there's a motion, and before we go to a second, I just want to make a couple comments as well before we actually go to a vote. I think there's a second here, but uh, just briefly, um, Touche, uh, echo the comments from both of my colleagues, and thank you to staff for um, educating us and reminding us about the various plans that are currently underway and going through the process. That's definitely good to know uh, that you guys are already studying that and you plan on bringing that back at the end of the year. Um, how did Someone asked, how did this end up on the agenda? It was unanimously approved by the council at a last meeting, so that's how we got on the agenda. And um, I think that, uh, again, it's important to just mention that uh, this particular project, uh, staff identified the funding source as the parks diff. So this is not a liability on the general fund or anything else. There's money in that park diff specifically to make improvements to our parks. Um, and that money can only be used on parks. Um, so yeah, I think it's a wise idea, probably the best idea to uh, allow the process uh, to go through, allow those studies to take place, um, get community input in the process as well. And, and then on top of this, we currently have that $6 million uh, project that is underway as well for all of our parks. So uh, yeah, I think it's probably best to uh, just allow the process to go through, get the community input, and then see what the community wants at Patriot Park. So that'll conclude my comments, and there is a motion uh, from Mayor Pro Tem. Is there a second? Second. Okay, motion and a second. Please vote.
and that passes four to four yeses. And that brings us now to the city council reports. Uh, first up, we will, um, since council member Marquez had to uh, step away from the meeting, uh, we'll have Mayor Pro Tem do the report for RTA. Uh, so uh, go, go right ahead, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Tonight, um, again, I was not there at the meeting, but um, I can uh, give you the agenda summary of what took place. Um, I'm providing updates from the RTA Board of Directors meeting held on February 23rd and the RTA Board of Administration and Operations Committee held on March 1st. The board heard a presentation of the RTA's in information technology operations and authorized to award an agreement to Helixstrom uh, to provide the information technology managed services. The committee heard a presentation regarding the free bus rides on Earth Day and recommended this item to, to the full board of directors for approval. The committee also approved and recommended the full board of directors for authorizing staff to add five vehicle transfer applications to the RTA's retired vehicle recipient li wait list. That concludes my report on the RTA <laughs> Board of Directors and Board of Administration and Operation Committee meeting that was held on February 23rd and March 1st. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Next, we have a report of uh, W. Arcog from Council Member Baca Santa Cruz. Um, I attended the March 6th W. Arcog Executive Committee meeting and we, that included a presentation from the California Air Resources Board, CARB, on the recently adopted 2022 scoping plan for achieving carbon neutrality for the state of California. This concludes my report on the last WRCOG meeting, but miss, oh, missing from ours is the school district joint force. I have that report as well. Do you want me to give that now or wait? Yeah, I don't see it here. It's uh, right is there, there, it's not on our agenda not here, but go, go right ahead yeah, for, it, the Joint Task Force? The last, um, the Joint Task Force uh, meets every other month. The last meeting was um, um, the 21st of last month. In this meeting is um, representatives from Myrna Valley Unified, Valverde Unified, Myrna Valley College, Lake Paris, and the City of Myrna Valley is represented there by Think Together, our Police Department, Parks and Community Services, and um, topics discussed at the last meeting included um, traffic concerns. Um, everybody was giving kudos to not only the police department who has been doing traffic enforcement around the schools, but also the fact that they're promoting it on social media. So not only are they deterring those who are being ticketed, but also those who um, in the community know that we're out there in force and um, concerned about traffic safety and student safety around the schools. Also was discussion regarding the new school that is being constructed on Nason and concerns there um, as well. So um, this task force uh, meets every other month and so I look forward to meeting with them once again. And then there's the RCA. Yes, so um, I'll be doing the reports for RCA and RCTC. Uh, those are the last two council reports for the RCA. R the RCA. I'm the alternate on the RCA committee, and they met yesterday. Uh, Marquez, um, Council Member Marquez, did not attend the meeting nor inform anybody that he wasn't going to attend, so that I could go and represent the city. So, um, I just want to put it out there that as the alternate, I should be informed if he's unavailable to attend. Thank you. So for RCA, we have um, a very brief report. Items covered at the RCA Board of Directors meeting on March 6th included a status report on acquisitions made by RCA. For the final reporting month of the 2022 calendar year, 24 parcels have been acquired for a total of 22,206 acres added to the reserve. Uh, that concludes the report for RCA. And a report for Riverside County Transportation Commission um, providing updates for the RCTC Budget and Implementation Committee meeting held on February 27th. The committee approved the proposed commission policy goals and objectives for fiscal year 2023-2024. The committee also heard a presentation regarding the formula funding distribution within Riverside County and approved an agreement between the commission and the Coachella Valley Association of Governments, also known as CVAG. 
That concludes my report on the RCTC Budget and Implementation Committee meeting, and we have our uh, general meeting for RCTC tomorrow um, at the Board of Supervisors building. So uh, we'll have a report uh, from that for our next City Council meeting. That concludes City Council reports. Brings us now to I-2, which is the Employee Association report. We have none tonight. That brings us to I-3, City Manager's report. Uh, thank you, Mayor's members of the City Council. I'm going to keep it very short, just one item uh, tonight. Uh, as I always mention, we really have some of the best in the business. And it's always good that we're recognizing, we're always uh, always being recognized being um, the best in the business. So just recently, the California Society of Municipal Finance Officers, CSMFO, has awarded the City of Winter Valley for their very thought after, very lucrative innovation award. This is the top prize for that uh, particular organization. And this award was given to us because during the pandemic, as you know, we all worked through the pandemic. We're here, and there was a lot of programs that we are needed to help our residents and our businesses. And uh, and this team uh, really uh, pulled together with the support of the mayor and city council, really put a lot of fantastic programs. But with all these fantastic programs, we also need to have good um, auditing and also good uh, accounting. And so we were able to come up with a fantastic accounting system to track all the different funding sources. And over 150 different funds were, were tracked and probably in a three months period on all the different different uh, funds and also FEMA reimbursements to really provide a lot of this uh, services for our residents. So we were uh, awarded that award and just wanna thank the mayor and council for their support. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, you do have some of the best in the business and, uh, and this is another great win for the city of Moon Valley. Thank you. Thank you, city manager. As always, um, the famous city manager's report with some amazing news there, some good updates. Thank, thank you so much. That now brings us to closing comments from the city council. First, we have council member uh, Banca Santa Cruz. I'll keep this short. Um, I just wanted to announce um, the county supervisor has informed me that um, there is an individual artist fellowship that is um, open to any artists practicing any form of art in Riverside County, there are um, category titles of emerging artist fellow, that is $5,000, established artist fellow, 10,000, and a legacy artist fellow for $50,000. So the Art Council is looking to spread the word um, that these opportunities are out there for any uh, resident of Riverside County. So I know that Myrna Valley is full of artists at various levels, and I just wanna let them know that this opportunity is available through the county supervisor's office. And <coughs> as the time of the meeting is late, I'm going to defer the rest of my comments to another meeting. Thank you. And Councilmember Marquez is, is not here. We have uh, Councilmember Bernard. Um, I'm going to keep this short also. I'd just like to thank everybody that did come out tonight in support of the slate. Um, what you saw tonight is democracy in action. Also, I want to remind everybody, because um, we have not mentioned, and I'm sure uh, Mayor Cabrera will, that we have an art festival this Saturday, and it starts at 11, and we are very excited about it. We are keeping an eye on the weather. Jeremy has informed me. We will have an answer by Thursday if it rains. Hopefully it does not. Um, if, even if it's cloudy, please come out. We have a lot of things going on, and we worked um, very, very hard to get this off, and I'm very proud to have our first art festival here. Um, and I will just close with, because um, it's Women's History Month, so um, I will close with a quote from Shirley Chisholm, the first woman to run for, um, for president and try to get the dom Democratic nomination. I am and will always be a catalyst for change. So in short, we must always push ourselves to change even when it's rough and it's tough and people don't think it's the easiest thing to do because change is difficult and that's why it's called change. Next we have Mayor Pro Tem Delgado. Two minutes, 57 seconds. Thank you to RSO and their traffic enforcement at all the schools. Um, great job to our city staff and their award. You guys are awesome. And, and I know that I don't wanna get this watered down because I say this all the time, but we do have the best staff. So um, last Wednesday I met with Angel Marquez of Senator Padilla's office to discuss some needs I have in District 2 um, and some funding sources. It was a very fruitful meeting and look forward to working with his office to bring some great things to my district and to the city of Myrna Valley. On Saturday I attended along with uh, some of my peers 
the annual Marina Valley Unified School District Reading Festival at the Marina Valley Mall, and it was great to see all the kids so excited about reading. I know I wasn't that excited at their age about reading, so it was a great turnout. In addition, I just want to publicly oppose the ridiculous proposed California Assembly Bill AB 742 that will ban the use of police canines to apprehend suspects or conduct any form of crowd control. This bill is authored by Assembly Member Corey Jackson. Mr. Jackson, you are supposed to be representing all of your residents in your district, but I want to tell you, you are not. You say the canines are a cruel and inhumane practice. These canines are just another tool for our law enforcement community to use when a criminal is putting your families, our families, in harm's way. A couple of years ago, I had a female try to gain access to my house with the kids sleeping in their rooms. I was able to arm myself, but when we called the sheriff's department, they were there pretty quick. As she left my front door area, they could not find her and take her into custody until the canine arrived and found her hiding under one of my cars in my driveway. The use of the canine possibly saved her life because my family was very scared and I certainly did not want to use deadly force, but the safety of my family was my priority. So I was grateful for the use of the canine and the resolution he provided. She went to jail and my wife and children were safe from a possible dangerous situation, partly due to the use of the canine. Now, that is just one example of the great job these dogs do. These dogs or tools are used to apprehend people that break the law and may want to hurt your our family. Bloodhounds have been used in law enforcement since the Middle Ages. They even searched for Jack the Ripper in 1888. However, canines were first used as apprehension tools in 1889. So to say they are cruel and inhumane is rhetoric that is just not true. They help resolve issues that may not otherwise be resolved without the escalation of force. They have a badge and are considered police officers, so to eliminate them through an assembly bill is just ridiculous to me. Simply put, they give law enforcement another option other than the use of deadly force. Deadly force is the absolute last option in the force continuum, but if these tools, canines, are eliminated from that continuum, it may prove to be a huge mistake in our society, in our state. Please do not allow this assembly bill to pass as it just it is just a bad bill that will remove another tool for our law enforcement professionals to use while they protect our families. I do not oppose this ri ridiculous proposed bill as law enforcement professional myself, rather a citizen of California, where this has been introduced. So I have nothing else. <clears throat> Please have a great week and be kind to one another as we go about our daily lives. And we'll see you here next week for our, our post, what is it called? Study, Study session. I can never. I think most of us are probably half asleep right now, but um, uh, thank you for that, and uh, just brief closing comments as well. Um, this weekend on Saturday, I was invited out and had the opportunity to throw the first pitch at a local uh, Pony League softball game over at Morrison Park. Uh, first time I've ever thrown out a first pitch, and this is uh, the ball that I actually got to throw, and it was signed by, I think you can see it on the camera there, signed by all of the... Um, uh, the girls on the softball team. So really, really nice opportunity there. Again, my first time, you only ever see it on TV. So to do it yourself, is, it's, it's different and special. Um, so I want to thank the president, the coaches, the parents, and the students for the work that they're doing here in the community. Um, it's the largest single league uh, in the city of Moreno Valley. Um, so uh, really appreciate them giving me the opportunity to come out and throw the first pitch. Uh, as Councilmember Bernard said, art festival, happening at the amphitheater this, uh, this Saturday. So uh, definitely invite everybody to come out. Uh, if you haven't seen yet, uh, you will see on Friday, uh, there's a, a project that uh, some folks at Marina Valley College and local artists actually put together. Uh, I helped them out with it as well. It's, it's uh, an art piece. It's a MoVal, the word MoVal, um, 3D, manufactured at Marina Valley College. And um, it's really different. So. I don't think there's ever been anything like it. And if you come out on Saturday, you'll get a chance to see it and take pictures of it uh, with it yourself as well. MVUSD Reading Festival uh, was there in attendance as well. I had the opportunity to share a few remarks and um, uh, just congratulate the district and the students on their accomplishments as well as the teachers, the faculty, and staff on everything that they're doing there as well. So that was really nice and um, heard a lot of good feedback because that particular event hadn't happened in, in a while. So a lot of the parents were very happy that that was uh, finally back and there was a lot of activities for the youth. So that was really nice and 
I think they had a Clifford the Big Red Dog and then uh, Thing 1 and Thing 2 there as well. So it was really nice, uh, really, really nice event. Uh, so it's pretty late now, uh, contrary to what some of the speaker, speaker might say, I do work as well. Uh, I actually have a second job. I wish I had more time uh, to work more, but uh, you only have so much, so much time in the day. So um, with that, I do want to uh, just touch base on this particular topic um, that uh, resident Tim Kazette, uh, Tom Jarrell, did I get that right? Tim Kazette. Um, he, he did pass recently, and uh, so just want to uh, close this meeting in memory of Tim Kazette, um, who touched many lives here in the city of Moreno Valley and has left a legacy. So I uh, would like to close tonight's meeting in Tim's memory. So with that, we will adjourn our city council meeting at 9.56 p.m. Have a good night, everyone.